This building right here is the only college in Nicolay Bay and it's insufficient to meet the needs of the region's population. And the result has been a massive brain drain because most of the area's brightest youth are forced to leave to go to college and many never return. And their absence really cuts in two ways. First, the population has been shrinking on the superior side of the bay. And second, many jobs that require higher education have gone unfilled. And because of this, Evergreen Mayor Kara Begay and Couillard Shores Mayor Tim Kikwam have taken their concerns to Governor Sheila Johnson. They suggest that Nicolay Bay needs a university and that the lack of one is leaving their communities at a competitive disadvantage relative to Superior City. They suggest opening a Superior State University campus right here on land the state already owns. And Governor Johnson is in complete agreement. You know, all politicians love a good ribbon cutting, and this is going to be a heck of a good opportunity for one. But the governor can't appropriate funds unilaterally. The legislature holds the power of the purse. However, when word about the potential for a new university gets out, citizens contact their legislators and demand action, which brings swift approval for funding at the state house. In today's episode, we're going to begin building this new university in a brand new community, the town of Nicolet. The university and the community will grow simultaneously, leading to the entire community and campus being mixed use and walkable. And we're going to use assets in a unique way to make this happen, placing all assets in a very deliberate and purposeful way. And if you like building universities, hit the like button. And if you prefer plopping the pre-made ones, hit the like button for that too. And in either way, let me know what your favorite university is. Or if you'd prefer, leave an emoji that reminds you of universities for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays. Where we are building Nicolay Bay and we've got a good one today. We are going to found the first university in the community right about here and we are going to build a brand new town to house it, the town of Nicolay. So let's get started by going over today's plan. The majority of our build is going to be focused in between the interstate and the water here. This is going to be where our university is and our town. They'll be completely blended into one another. We're going to start by adding a bridge across the river and this will be one of the major roads in the community, kind of hugging the terrain here and then likely dipping off basically into the water. There'll be a really nice view from there and maybe we'll do something special here in the future. We'll then have a road that tees into there and meets up with the interstate. We'll build a new custom interchange for the community. And then from there, we're going to start building our university, likely focused right about here and over here. And in the middle of it, we're going to have a small downtown that will also have some of our university buildings sprinkled in. Over the long term, I'd like to build a couple of neighborhoods over here, some parks and city services, and really a variety of things that make this a full-fledged community. But we are going to be building a lot of infrastructure today. So let's just jump into building our transportation network. The very first thing we're gonna do is build that bridge into this new area. And for all of the roads that we build right now, I think I'm gonna start out with some dirt roads. The reason I like to work with dirt roads is they're just very flexible. They give you guidelines. You don't have to feel bad about deleting them because they're cheap. They're just the perfect planning road if you're not going to actually have planning roads. So I'm just going to connect this across. We'll go 20 units. This will likely need to be signalized. And now we'll turn on our contours because I want to make sure that we are respecting our topography. We'll ground level this and kind of follow our terrain lines over here. But actually, I have a different idea. Why don't we use the network multi tools? create connection mode to make a nice connection between this road and the bridge. What I like about this is if we have it on the correct node, we can adjust where the curve is occurring so we're not encroaching too much upon the forest or the hillside. And we can make a really nice gentle curve here. I selected that middle so that we could straighten that out and I'm going to increase the radius here so it's a more gentle curve. This gentle curve will also help us hug our terrain lines and then I'll just hit enter. And that is the curve that we will preserve. I don't love what happened up here. So I am going to use the arrange at line mode to gentle this up a bit. And now that we have that cleaned up, let's talk about where this road is going to go. And I mentioned that I want there to be some sort of vista right here. Let's just line this right up here and maybe we'll have some sort of fishing dock or something down there. Not 100% sure just yet, but we'll make it something special. And then we'll use our create curve mode just to connect this up nicely. And there we go. Now, this will be our downtown area. So I want to have a couple of straight roads coming off from here. I think we'll have a collector couplet. Maybe we'll go 40 units. And from there, I want this to come together. So the way that we'll handle this is I'm going to draw that connection right there. That's obviously not what we want to do. 
But I know that if I use only grid, I can add a path right here. And then I can turn all my snap twos on and create a road. So I'm going to go 10 units right here. And now I have that guideline and I can make this new road. And this road is going to hug the coast. And now we'll get rid of that and we will use our create curve mode. I'll select the two of these. And look at that. Just a beautiful connection in. Obviously, it could be a little better. All you got to do is use just a little bit of move it and you can make that perfect. Then I added another node there and held down alt while inside of move it to make a nice gentle curve right there. I might back this out the other way. We'll have to see. Now let's focus on our connection into the highway. And this is probably the most important part. I'm going to parallel the coast right here. And then I'm going to do something that is going to be a little bit strange. Let's use our create parallel mode and add a dirt road right along the side of the highway. I'm going to hit tab so it switches sides of the highway. Then I'm going to hold down shift and hit plus so I can back this out a little ways from the highway. This is 30 meters and what holding down shift does besides making this go all white and difficult to see is that it lets me move 10 meters at a time. I'll hit enter there and I'll create a perfect parallel road. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side, though I'm a little dubious about how helpful this one's going to be. I'll again go out 30 meters, hit enter, and we'll have a perfect connection. Now here's where the magic happens. And I went a little further than I should have on this end. Not going to worry about that. But we are going to use the create curve mode to create a lovely connection right into here. And obviously this is not what we want to have. We could do this, I mean truthfully, but I want it to be a little bit nicer. So we'll go into our free form tool and I want to come right into here. And I want to find a node or create one on this road. Maybe this is a good spot for us. And with Anarchy on, I'm going to freeform into this parallel road. I'll do the exact same thing from that node in the opposite direction. And now I can delete the roads I don't need. And they're perfectly smooth because I use the freeform tool. So that is absolutely excellent. Now I want to make sure that the heights are good here. So what I'll start out with is upgrading this road into a bridge. And I honestly probably need some more nodes. Yeah, the nodes are right in the center, so I'll add nodes, get an error. It's not the end of the world. This means I'm a little bit too close. And then I will elevate these two sections. And I'm going to remove that center node. The reason I removed that center node is that center node is actually a pillar and the pillar would be in the middle of my road. So I don't want that. Now I'm going to get the height right here at the road. So I'm just going to drop this down. And here's where I may just upgrade this right away. So I know that this is going to be a two way highway segment. So I'm going to convert that and these, which I know will be one way segments. Now, the whole reason I wanted to do that is I wanted a light post because the light post is a pretty good indicator of your height being OK. And it looked all right. So I'm just going to use move it control H this down into place. And that is our general height down here. So you will notice one issue with this, and that is our ramps are actually going to be coming in backwards. This is OK. We actually have an interchange like this in the Madison area. It's in Monona Drive and the Beltline. Basically, you have to have a signal there. It will work. It's not ideal, but not every interchange will be perfect. Sometimes it'll be just fine. Now let's build our other two ramps and these ones should be fairly straightforward or at least this one will be. We'll just come off from here and I'm going to use my create curve mode again. We'll just make that connection in and this is the challenging one because this one basically slingshots back around. I'm going to parallel a bit further back and the reason I'm doing this is I think we are going to need to basically have a pretty intense loop down. There we go. That'll be our connection point there. Now we just have to do the work of actually making our final couple connections. And now comes the satisfying part, getting all of our ramps right. Now I'm going to hit all of these up with the node controller and make these merges a bit nicer. And then sometimes you'll end up with something like this. This to, to me means we've got an extra node there. And I can see there it is. It's way too close to this other node. If I remove that, it'll look nice again. And for all of these, I'm just making the ends straight. And now I'm going to use the slope mode to make sure that all of our slopes are reasonable. And I think for the most part, that's looking pretty good. Although I mentioned we have that crossover and you'll see it right here. They have to cross over traffic if they want to 
get into the university. So if we're gonna have that, we need to have a signalized intersection. So we'll add that signal right there and that shouldn't back up at all. It just should provide a nice safe connection across the highway. And you'll also notice I have upgraded this. I wanted to make sure that the lane math was correct through here. So we've got an asymmetric highway. This will come in, we'll have two lanes here and that'll meet up right into there. I will use the create curve mode to make a nice clean connection into here. And I'm also going to use arrange at line to gentle this curve up. And I don't know for certain that this will be highway straight through. In fact, I'm pretty sure it won't be, but I wanted to upgrade it for now just so I could get a feel for what it looks like. And now I wanna go through and create all of our lane markings. I'll show you how to make one and then I will do the rest on my own. So I'm gonna control L this. If I click on an end and then hold down the shift button, I will get a solid line. If I let go, it will be a stripe line. If I need a double stripe line, I can select this, go straight through, and then set the style over here to be a double solid, for instance. Now, right here, you'll notice that we have a shape that we has formed because of all the lines that we've created. And what I'm gonna do is create a filler. So to create a filler, you just hold down Control Shift F, and then you select the different points where you want what will be the outsides of the shape and then it will create a shape for you. We have stripes here, probably good enough. I'm going to leave it. Chevrons are what many people prefer or islands. All that said, I'm going to go super simple. I don't think it's the end of the world to go really basic with the stripes. And then you might notice that you've got some lines in the wrong place like this. I'm going to go back into the tool and if you hold down control, you can slide these over. And now everything looks pretty good. Now, obviously we could keep getting even more finicky with this, but I don't think it's necessarily worth it. So I'm gonna finish the rest of these and we'll be right back. All right, and we have all of our lane marking done and things are looking pretty good. I also wanted to add some acceleration, deceleration lanes through here. So I've done that just so that the merge onto the highway is a little bit more smooth. There's two more things we need to do over here. We've got a bunch of trees where they shouldn't be. We'll get rid of those. And then I also need to go into TMPE and set our lane connectors. This is really important because folks will start to merge right in the middle of these where they shouldn't be. And I don't want that to happen. So I'll just come through here and control S. We get all those nice lane connectors and this will work everywhere except for right here. This is actually a place where we need to make sure we have it up oh, and I've actually done my lane markings wrong here. So let's get that fixed. And there we go. I think that that does the trick here. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these lane connectors set. And for these, it's not a bad idea to set them as you develop that acceleration or deceleration lane and as you merge on or off the highway. Both spots are equally important. And there we go. We are all set all the way through here. So let's get this upgraded. And we're likely going to change these out for something else, but we will cross that bridge when it comes. For the most part, though, this is the basic transportation network that we are going to have for this area. Obviously, it's a university, so we'll want to bring transit in here at some point. But this is our roadway network. So let's move on to founding our campus. This might not be the most obvious place to start, but we're going to start by getting rid of this little faculty building. This is a building that came with the high tech buildings content creator pack, and it has served us well Has a capacity of 800 students and 718 are currently taking advantage of this and they will now no longer have a university. Now I want to do this because we're going to found a new university and we're going to need to level it up. And that means we're going to need students. And if everyone's getting educated here, that means they're not getting educated in our new university. And with the leveling up in mind, we are going to form our university before we do anything else. I want to turn on our contours because it's really going to dictate what we're doing in this area. And it's important to remember that you can't even place the administration building until you have a district formed for a college. So that's where we'll start. We're going to paint a campus area. And I'm going to actually cover basically this entire community. And we will clean this up eventually. But for the time being, this is a lot of freedom for us. It means that we can place a university building anywhere through here and not worry about the consequences. So the administration building is going to be off the main drag. I'm going to tuck it away back here and I'm going to try to work with the terrain. We're going to ground level this. Then we'll place this right here. I did tuck this or at least I tried to tuck this a little bit away from this node. We are going to place a parking lot back here. So with that in mind, let's move this over 
one unit. So in move it, I'm going to hold down alt. So I snap and it's actually two units that we'll need. Now I'm going to level a pad here. I'm noticing something weird happening with this building where the paths on the building itself are conforming to the terrain. And for whatever reason, they won't come back to where I want them to be. So we're going to replace this building. I'm giving it a couple of units off from the parking lot and then I'm going to hold down alt and back it two away from the road. That's the maximum that we can do and that should be pretty good. Now, if I recall correctly, this is the only building that actually needs a road in the university, which is kind of frustrating, but it, it's fine. We've got to give some building road access. This will probably be the only one, though. And then we've renamed that. So we're in a good place there. I do want to bring water and power to the campus right away. And then I think we're going to run a suburban power line here. What we'll do to make this clean is we are going to use our parallel road tool. And I'm just going to parallel all the way back to the bridge here. And I think I could even pull this in, maybe overlap a little bit as far as this looks, eight meters. And that'll get this right on the side of the road. Oh, that is the good stuff right there. This will be in the middle of the road over here. We'll need to fix that. Always grab the circle, the large circle, because that's how you move this asset. And then I'm also noticing it looks like we have a transformer right here. We'll get that on the side of the road as well. Very nice. Very, very nice. Now I'm going to just turn this in by the university main building and we have this running right away. So I care about this because I want this to level up. So we are going to also add a few more buildings. Just rem reminded me, though, forgot to remove these trees over here. There we go. And now let's continue to build our little university campus. But maybe before we do that, we should see what it's going to take to level up. And it really comes down to a few things. We need two academic works, 500 students and a campus attractiveness of 200. This shouldn't be that difficult, but I want to get started right away on the academic works. We're just going to pour money into it. And then I'll try to attract students with every single policy under the sun that I think will get them interested in coming here. So that is all the campus policies. And then in our city policies, we will have an education boost, which will bleed us of money. So we've got to be really careful with this. Now I want to build more of the campus and we're going to focus on this area right here. The terrain's a little messed up. So this is a map maker's error. So this is something that I, I think even when Bon Bon B reviewed this map, he commented that there were some digital artifacts and there are some. <laughs> I wish I could go back and fix it and re-release the map with, without those. At this point, I think it's probably not worth it. But I do think that that's something that in a future map I might clean up. This was my first attempt at making a map and I'm, I'm honestly pretty proud of it. Now that that's flat, I want to run a path through here. So we'll go with our normal trade school path and I want to use grid because we're going to run this right down the center and then we'll turn on angle. So we maintain this angle. I'm not exactly sure where that's going to go, but I do know what I want to start with. That is, I want to go through some of these buildings that we have available to us. So the study hall is probably our first asset. We'll place that right here and then I'm going to use move it to try to line this up nicely. So I want to back this out three units and then up two or three. We'll go three. We'll set this to the height of the path and then we'll make a nice connection right there. We disrespected the terrain a bit, but this is a university campus. I think we could take some liberties and grade things a bit. Obviously, that would be done before the fact, but we're going to take a couple liberties here. Not everything will be, is going to be the height of realism, and that's OK. Now, this building should provide us looks like up to 400 students, which would be very close to what we need. But if we really want to keep it up and keep moving into the next level, we need dorms. Now, here's where I've added a really unique mod, the Campus Industries Housing Mod. This is a great mod. I've been looking for a mod like this. Basically, it turns the dorms into apartments as well as university buildings, which I think is really exciting. So I want to add in some of these apartments. We're going to add them over here. They're going to be a little ways off. We'll have some probably within the campus and then maybe some over here as well. Think of this as like graduate housing and then undergrad housing. So we'll do a little of both. And I'm going to start off by placing these on one of these parking lot roads. So I'll go up five units and then I'm going to make these little pods. So I'm not sure how many units I'm going to need, but we'll start out with 20 or 10 rather. And then I'll set them to be the height of the road. Very nice. And let's get water and power here right away as well so that these continue to improve our campus. 
And I think to remind myself that I want to get rid of these, I'm going to use an obnoxious transmission line. And now we've got these up and running. And here's what's really special about this mod. So basically, this mod turns these buildings into apartments. So you see a couple of things. Obviously, we've got our students here. We've got university students in the city. We've got the number of apartments that are occupied and the number of residents inside of those apartments. So what this mod tries to do is take any students in the city that are part of this university and send them to these dorms to live. So you actually get people living in these dorm buildings, activity coming from these dorm buildings, and they help also improve your university, which is really exciting. And that's going to be really important to us because I want people walking up and down this road because we're going to have a number of businesses on this road and they would die if there weren't residents living in these dorms. So this mod applies to barracks and dormitories. And I know there's at least one strange bug in it. So when you first place these buildings, you won't have it apply as the industry or campus building. So inside the mod description, it says that you can reset the building and that should make it work. That in my experience hasn't been the case. You actually need to restart your save after you place a building for the first time and then they will work immediately. So I'm gonna place a number of these dormitories knowing that I want there to be a number of them and we will then save and restart and, and things things should work appropriately. So I mentioned that I wanna have some dorms over here. We're gonna do that as well. And there we go, a pretty simple dorm layout right here, just a nice little pod of them. And then we'll have, I think maybe two more complexes like this over here. And there we go. I tried to work a bit with the terrain and I moved things around quite a bit, but this is, I think, a pretty good solution for this area. We will need to clean things up. And I'll be honest with you, I think this looks pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and get, we'll get our water pipes under here again. And I feel like for the most part, this should be what we are looking for. There's one more building I want to place. It's the university grounds. But after that, I think that we should have enough to reach at least the next level. And though we're not going to max things out today, I think we're going to get to be in a pretty good place by the end of this. And there we go. Kind of just tuck this away behind the building in the forest, kind of where I would expect it to be, not the most prominent location. And I realize there is one more building from the university that we have not placed. That is our book club. And I do want that to be in the downtown area. So I'm going to place that now just so that I don't forget about it. Let's just make sure that these aren't operating. They are not operating. We're going to save and you're going to see that this they start working almost immediately. 239 students. Let's see what we get in just a moment. And we've successfully reloaded back into the save. And I'm excited to see this. Check this out. The student population is just exploding and we are immediately going to have our students threshold met. So that is exactly what you have to do if you use this mod the first time. You just got to bring it into your save, save the game, reload back in and then it'll work for you. And the exciting thing is now when we click on all these dorms, you'll see that we've got students. We've also got residents. We can line up the number of students with the number of residents. We can see that. For whatever reason, this dorm has half of the people there not being students. <laughs> so I don't think I'd want to live in a dorm as a non-student, but, you know, I guess do whatever you want to do. So with that in mind, we really just need to make sure that we are getting academic works created and we're going to have to just wait for our academic year to end. Once that happens, we should be able to continue to build out our university. But for the time being, I think we need to start thinking about our main street. So in my opinion, the main street area should be the most special part of this build. So I want to focus on mixing uses. I want to focus on this being an active and exciting place to be. And to do that, we're going to work in a bunch of buildings that shouldn't be next to one another right into this main street area. So to begin, I want to break up these blocks. This again right here is 35 units. I think we're going to break these into maybe eight unit blocks. 
There we go. This is the general layout of our downtown area. And I've kind of gone back and forth on some of this. Basically, I want to give the university a little bit of space from what will be some university housing and some uses that maybe aren't super compatible with the university itself. And I also want there to be a nice connectivity through here because most of the students are likely going to be walking. So all of those things are really important to keep in mind when you're making a campus. So now we've got our main street. I've obviously got to relocate this book club. It's in the middle of a street now, and I'm not 100% sold on all these little stub streets. In fact, why don't we just get rid of those right through here? Maybe we'll keep one <laughs> just for some connectivity. And now I want to really give some consideration and thought as to what we place here. The most important things are obviously going to be city services. So let's place a fire department so I don't forget. And we'll place a police station. Those are two uses I would absolutely expect to see on campus. And then we'll also place a clinic. And we'll just imagine that this is the clinic for the university itself. And I'm gonna upgrade this to be a parking lot. So we'll need to adjust this down the line. But I, I like the idea of this being a parking lot so that this little city services campus has plenty of parking for all the employees here. Then I also want to add a post office, which might seem like a, a strange use to have here, but you got to think about it this way. Most of the students are going to be far from home. They might want to mail things that they would get, you know, from their parents or receive mail there, whatever the case may be. So this is going to be a very important use here. And then I also want to place a bank. Again, this is the type of use that would be invaluable to a student. So we'll place that there. They might not have much money, but they're going to take the money that they have from the bank right here. Now I want to search for some very specific uses that I think would be valuable to students. Things like a bookstore. And then I want to narrow things down in a very deliberate way. So I think that groceries would be incredibly important. And I know that the eco buildings have a grocery store. So I'm going to place one of the healthy weed stores over here. And then there are some nice eco restaurants as well. So we'll place one of those. That's a coffee shop. I might give that a bit more space and maybe add one more of these uses through here as well. And then from there, I want to really start thinking about the university city's assets. Oh, look at this. We've got four academic works and almost 2000 students. Our attractiveness is way higher than we need. We are now recognized so we can add on to our university and hopefully turn down some of uh, the costs that we're generating right now because we don't have any money. So let's slow this down for just a moment. And I am going to take away most of these policies, sorry students, and all these academic staff. And now we should at least be in a place where we can exist. <laughs> so back and find it, I want to narrow down the university city's assets. So I'm going to click on the show extra filters panel. And I know that all of those assets were created by King Leno. So I can select King Leno here, deselect this and select just the low density commercial and I'll get two sets of assets available to me. I'll get University City, and then if I go far enough along or expand this, I know I've got all the new shopping mall stuff. Now, the shopping mall stuff could be used here in moderation. Like I could see placing maybe one or two of these sorts of buildings around here, but not too much. They're kind of overwhelming for this area. I'm probably gonna stick exclusively to the University City, and these are the sorts of buildings I think you might see in this area. So these are not the fanciest things that we've got. What looks like a Dairy Queen and a Dollar General and a place to get your hair cut. But in a college town, I mean, you, you need what you need. So we're going to roll with it. There are also uses that folks might view as being a little bit unsavory, such as maybe a liquor store. Maybe we see one of those right here and also a coin operated laundry. Students are going to need to do their laundry after all. And then we'll add a couple more uses along the main street corridor. Not too many, but we want to have a few. And I really wanted to look at all these buildings because I'm going to pull them close to one another and make sure that the styles line up. And truthfully, King Leno has done such a masterful job with these that even if they're a little bit off, not bad. But this is the kind of thing you might expect to see in an area like this. Nice, dense, walkable buildings all next to one another. And then there's one big thing that's missing, and you might have noticed it. We don't have any bars or nightclubs or anything. And that's something I would absolutely expect to see. So we will get rid of asset creator and search for bar. 
And I think we've got exactly one <laughs> that comes with the University City Content Creator Pack. And it's this sky bar. And I think that we'll just pull this right up to the coast, which would be pretty amazing. And then we're going to take a look at some of our leisure buildings. And I think that these ones would be absolutely a great fit through here as well. So we're going to add a karaoke bar and a beauty salon. Then we have this pub right here. We're going to add that as well. And I think that's probably pretty good. Now, I wanted to place some parking along here as well. This is something that we are going to need to think about in City Skylines too. So why not think about it now? And it's something that gets thought about every time a building like this gets built. So might as well do it. I'm going to kick it old school. We'll use my parking lot asset. And then for leisure, we're going to add a couple more buildings through here. We have a gym, a restaurant, and maybe even a comedy club. And then in the show extra filters panel, I want to narrow this down by the art deco content creator pack. There is a cinema in there that I think would make a ton of sense to have near a university. I might even place that a little bit closer to campus. Maybe I'll just place it right over here, along with an ice cream parlor and another laundromat. And then there's one more thing I want to add in the downtown area, and that is some lodging. If parents were to visit, they're gonna need a place to stay, and we have the right DLC for this. So in the downtown, I'm gonna add a budget motel, budget hotel, budget hotel. And then on the way in, we will add a roadside motel or two. And that's pretty good. I wanted to have these a little bit closer, but the terrain is just a bit challenging to work with. And truthfully, if you think about it, these are very inexpensive uses. The last thing that you'd want to see would be a whole bunch of terrain work being done to make this happen. It would make the whole project not viable. So that's why we're not doing it. And I did leave the power line in front of these. I kind of like it. I kind of think that it, it feels reasonable for this kind of use. These are probably not gonna do well, and I think I'm gonna be okay with that. Maybe we'll put a gas station near here, but beyond that, until the university is done, it's going to struggle a little bit. And in fact, we'll even skip the gas station for now. The last thing I wanna do in the main street area is I do wanna place a couple of homes, and for this, we're going to narrow this down, again, using Find It 2, to the University City Content Creator Pack, and then I'll select only housing, and now I should be able to just randomize these using my question mark. My randomize button, yours could be different. And there we go. And I honestly love this. I think this is awesome. So basically what we've done is just randomize these buildings through here. I've added a row of apartments right in front of this area. And I think it honestly looks pretty reasonable. So now we've got the core of our downtown done. There's definitely more details that we need. There's one that I want to add before we move on. And that is we've added this big spot in the center because I want this to be a major feature. Now this is inspired by a real university. And if you have an idea of what that university is, if you drop it in the comments and I see it first, I will pin your comment. So. Drop the idea of what university this might be inspired by, and the first person to get it gets their comment pinned. And with that, I think our downtown's moving in a pretty good direction. Let's go ahead and continue expanding our university. All right, let's take a look at the buildings that we've unlocked. We've unlocked the outdoor study, the gymnasium, the trade school cafeteria, trade school fountain, and the police academy. So some really great assets. We're going to work all of these into the build and then we will likely do a bit of landscaping. So to begin, I want to think about this outdoor study area and we're going to place this somewhere way over here. I think that you could also make a case to put it over here, but I think we're going to probably have our commencement building over here once we unlock that. Our police academy is monstrous. So we need to have a solid location for that. We'll very likely place that somewhere like this. Let's look at our contours. Yeah, it's pretty flat. So we'll place that like this. And then we'll likely have to have a road coming to the rear of it, just so that there's access for trash pickup and things of that nature. And then our gymnasium needs to be kind of prominently featured, probably somewhere near the front. And our cafeteria needs to be centrally located. So that also, I think we may actually put this on the main street. Maybe we'll get rid of a building or two over here and add that right in this area. 
And then for the fountain, I want to use this to reframe what we're doing here. I thought that what I was doing was what I wanted to do, <laughs> but I decided to, to call a little bit of a mulligan on this area. So what I'm thinking is we're going to have a path on either side. So rather than having that one in the center, and then from there, we will back this building up just a bit, maybe even rotate it around so it fits with our terrain a little bit better. It looks like this is the front of the building, even though it responds to this as the front anyway. So it should be fine. And then we've got this, which again, I want that to be prominent, but I do want to maintain our dual path here. So maybe we'll do something like that. And we'll, let, we'll need to decorate this in a more extravagant way down the line. But for now, we'll just get this, get this established. And then we'll run this path up here. This will go to the police academy. Now, interestingly, there are parking stalls all the way around this. I really immensely dislike that. We're likely going to remove a number of them. It just doesn't seem necessary. Maybe we leave some, actually. Yeah, I will run the road all the way back here so that commuters would be able to drive to campus. So I will think about that a little bit. And now we'll just connect this up with the road over here. And all of this work messed up the bridge, so I figured this is as good a time as any to repair the bridge, make the span a little bit more reasonable, and we'll even adjust the heights so that they make sense. And that doesn't make sense. <laughs> there we go. That is much better. So we have this road serving the rear, be able to pick up trash, and folks will be able to drive to the rear parking lots. Good enough in my estimation. I am curious if we use Bob on this building, if it is possible to eliminate some of those parking stalls in the front. I'm guessing they're all the same, although it looks like we do have sub buildings. So there is a slight possibility. And if I take a look at individual parking spaces, maybe I can get rid of all of them. This is going to be probably the most ridiculous thing that I've done, but I'm going to do it. I believe I was able to get them all, and I'm honestly pretty pleased about this. You know, it was a little extra. But sometimes you've got to be a little extra and I'm a little extra sometimes. So I just got, I've got to be me. <laughs> so now there's only parking stalls in the back, the front. You can't park there. It is a thing of beauty. And then finally, you might've noticed I put the gym right here. The reason for that is I wanted to add the parking spaces on the road. So again, I'm thinking about the assets themselves. How do they function? And when you think about that, sometimes you don't have as many options as you might believe, and truthfully, I'm fine with that. And with that, we have everything that we need to reach the next level. We are recognized right now, and we will absolutely level up at the end of this year. And we're actually making a decent amount of money from our university too. So I'm feeling really good about where we've landed. I do want to upgrade this road, and after that, we'll take a look at our landscaping. So let's upgrade this road. We're gonna go with this four lane with wide sidewalk and trees. Seems like a good fit for this area. And with that, let's do a little bit of landscaping and detailing. Now, this is a part of the build I get really excited about because this is when you make things come to life. So I wanna think about everything, every building in this area. I wanna think about how it functions and ensure that it has proper access and that it is generously landscaped. I also wanna get rid of any of the lumpies and bumpies that I see. And we're gonna do things like this. We've got a signal here. That's unnecessary, we'll get that fixed. So let's start out with looking at our buildings and ensuring that things are situated appropriately. And for me, what that really means is looking at concrete, especially in this downtown area. We've got areas like this, which is a loading dock, and there is no way to access it. So we'll just plop a bit of concrete there, and we can add parking in places like this. I'm not 100% sure what we're gonna do at the rear of this area. We will do something. If you've got some good ideas, why don't you drop them in the comments because I am open to suggestions. I definitely don't want this to feel like the backs of buildings are fronting an absolutely amazing view. So maybe some sort of bike path along the ocean, not the ocean, the lake, something. We'll have to do something. There we go. And I think in the downtown area, we're in a pretty good place now. Obviously, I think for some of these, you could, at least if you're me, you could keep doing this forever. <laughs> 
So I just tried to make sure that you could circulate all the way around through here. It is the downtown, so there would be a lot of concrete and a lot of circulation in between all these different buildings. So I don't necessarily think that this is the worst thing in the world, even if it is kind of ugly seeing all that concrete. Back here, I think I'm going to leave some of these. I'll say that it's okay. Not perfect, but okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a couple of liberties. Now let's control the signals just to make sure that we don't have a bunch of inappropriate signals through here. And honestly, every road off from the collector couplet, we will have stop signs as well. And then as we get over here, this is actually unsignalized, the road that comes into this area. And that is wrong. We need to have a signal there. This would be a very, very important road with this area. And, and to just have it no signal, that would be incredibly dangerous. And then I changed the line work there as well to add stop bars and get rid of all the madness that was going on over here. Now we're going to focus on our parking lots. And for all of our parking lots, I just want to make sure that we have accessible parking. That is such an important thing. And if you don't have it, you're basically making it impossible for a whole portion of society to access the facility. And that's just not right. So let's get this done right. Now that all of our parking lots are resolved, let's add some paths to connect everything up. And that leaves just one more thing. We're going to add some landscaping. Now, this won't be the be all and end all for the landscaping here, but I do want to do a good job and make it feel like some thought and care has been put into this. And then once we finish up this area, will really do a great job. And as I was in the middle of landscaping, we've reached the end of another academic year and check this out. Six academic works, over 2000 students, a very attractive campus. We are now a renowned university, not just recognized. We've unlocked a ton of new buildings, all of which we will place in the next one, not in this one. Let's get back to landscaping. I think we're in a pretty good place as far as this goes. Obviously, there's going to be more landscaping, but I feel like until we finish the university, we've got to kind of hold off. And for the time being, I'm thinking that this is looking pretty darn good. And I think that leaves us with one more thing to do today. I think we need to take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. I just wanted to take a look at the views that you'd have from these dorms. Can you even imagine this? Taking a look at Marquette Island every day, the ships rolling by. Imagine the sunrises you get from right here. Absolutely fantastic place to live. And even if you didn't have a view of the water, you could have this view. All those wind turbines, absolutely stunning. And if you're in the back, you'd have access to these wonderful bicycle facilities that get you anywhere you could possibly want to go. 
I think that this university is quickly becoming the crown jewel of Nicolay Bay and something that every resident would be immensely proud of. And as we continue to build this out, we'll continue to add things that make this an attraction, not just for the students of the area, but also for people who live throughout the Bay. And we've got a lot more to add to the university, but we're going to have to do that in the next one. I really hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I want to thank you for taking a bit of time to hang out with me today. There's a million things you could have been doing and you decided to hang out with me. I don't take that for granted and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me today and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.